Hello, hello, hello! Welcome to another introduction to quantum physics, and uh, this quest of ours today we'll be looking at the expanded infinite square potential. So I'll have to uh, start off with defining our square potential. So originally we had some potential, actually not potential, zero. <laughs> Uh, we define it from 0 to L, and now we've suddenly expanded it to 2L. So, to the left it's infinite, and to the right of that it's infinite. And 2L. Now, let's have a look at what this looks like on the axes. So, there are axes. as the potential. And, okay. We had one wall at 0, and that goes up to infinity. And another wall was at some length L. All right. Now we've suddenly expanded that wall to 2L. Now let's have a look at what the function used to look like. We'll say we prepared our original wave function in uh, the ground state. So it looks something like that. And outside the original walls, it went to zero. Okay, and we've expanded this uh, wall, this well, sufficiently fast enough that we don't alter the wave function. The wave function does alter, though, when we measure it. And it collapses from this into a possible, one of the possible wave functions. So it could collapse into the new ground state of the next, of the new uh, well, or it could collapse into the second excited state, uh, sorry, the first excited state, or the second or third, or so on. We don't know, it's indistinguishable which state it could possibly be in, so it's in a superposition. Now, working from there, what we'll say is uh, then, so the original wave function in the ground state is equal to, uh, equal to the sum of all possible new states. This here, uh, this describes uh, the system in superposition, which is derived from, this is actually just the generalization of the Fourier series. So these, this is our uh, set of new wave functions, that's our original ground state. This here is really important coefficient, and we'll find out what it is later on in this. Okay, so I'll write out explicitly what this all equals. So the left hand side we remember from earlier is this. And it's in the ground state, so that it equals one, so it's pi x on L. A little bit of room. And I'll we find this the same way we found this. And it looks something like this. Uh, I'll put this in the middle here. And it's a sine n pi x on 2L. So if we uh, get rid of that, that's what it was. That's that's what we find for this new one here. All right. Now, in Fourier series, all these wave functions, all these functions here, are orthonormal to each other. They're all normalized and they're all orthogonal. Okay, so we're going to use that orthogonality to find what these coefficients are. And we do that using Fourier's trick. So we'll multiply both sides by an orthogonal uh, function that's orthogonal to this one here. And that can be this. Do that to both sides. And we have to integrate. So that's 0 to L. And that's 0 to, and I forgot the constant there, didn't I? 0 to 2L. And again, uh, 0 to L, this region for where this is non zero, and 0 to 2L, where this is non zero. Okay, I'm going to make a bit of room. Out of the way. 
get that out of the way. So, okay, so let's look at what happens when n does not equal m. So n does not equal m. Well, we can use the trig function to find out what happens here. And it's trig identity, sorry. Um, and that looks. We'll just look at the integrand only. So that can become cosine n minus m pi x 2l minus thingo with something else and other things on top of 2l. Okay, and we found that. And that's what we're integrating from 0 to 2l. Alright. Now that's a pretty simple integral. Just a lot of writing, that's all. Okay, now uh, when I have a sign, we have sign zero, it's going to equal zero, so that's nothing too exciting to write out. But when we put the 2L in there, so the X disappears with the 2L on the bottom. Okay. So we get that. So let's look at these sine functions, what happens here. I'm going to expand this out and write in general, so the plus and minuses together. So sine. Uh, it's n pi plus or minus m pi equals magic. Okay, so all, um, oh, I forgot the n there. Okay, so all integers n and m sine. Uh, will go to zero if we remember our unit circle. So this all equals zero for n is not equaling m. Okay, but that is trivial. So now we know what happens when n doesn't equal m. We get a trivial answer. Let's see what happens when n does equal m. So these two functions become the same. So we can simplify that. We're looking at the integrand only again. And we get a sine squared n by x into L. It's very easy to integrate. We've uh, done these before in past uh, similar things, past videos. So I'll just skip ahead. That equals L. Righto. Righto. Mm -hmm. So we found, let's uh, clear that. Need to find that integrand equals L when this equals n. Okay, now we can find out, we can make this coefficient subject. So we'll put everything to the other side and uh, we need this here. And that becomes. So yes, it does. Okay. And again, we'll use that trig identity to find what this equals. So this is going to start getting messy. Um, I forgot to put the two earlier. <laughs> I'll put that in the annotations. So it's cosine and it's one minus n on two. Nope, not an n, that's a one. Okay. And again, it's an easy integration. What 
do we get? A whole heap of stuff to write. Um, it's a sign. Okay, so again, the zeros in here, the signs become zeros, so we're just looking at what happens when the L's are put in. So, yes, that disappearing, and that disappearing. Wow, wow, wow. Well. Okay, uh, I see an L and pi on both those terms, so we'll take those out to the front too. That would disappear, won't it then? A pie. Magic. Oh, this is coming together nicely. Okay, it looks like we gotta expand these out to find out what happens there. So let's look at that. Get um sign. Again, that's a one plus or minus. Uh, let's not do it like that. Uh, that's a pie. And then n pi on two, yeah. Okay. N equals sine. I'll have to write this out completely without the plus or minus. What's that? Sine pi cosine n pi on two. Uh, we'll do the plus first. So plus cosine. Um. Actually, no, we can't do it like this. Let's go back, let's go back. I have to write this out completely. Um, what do we find? We'll find some magic. So, that's a one on... Whatever. One minus That becomes sine pi cosine and pi two minus Okay, that's that first one. This one Wow, okay. That's a lot. All right, now sine pi becomes zero. That term becomes zero. Same with this one. Uh, let's have a look. Co cosine pi, that's negative 1. So negative 1 times negative, so it's positive. And on this side, that's negative. And there's the negative there. If we bring that in, it may come positive. So I'll bring the positive to here. Okay. So. Let's simplify that further. And let's add on two plus. I didn't need brackets for that, did I? All right. So we've gotten this far. Uh, I'll stop the video here. And we'll continue with this in the next video. Hopefully you're enjoying this so far. Amazing mathematics.